good morning to all of you uh, i would like to thank the president and the council for inviting me to deliver this lecture so today we are going to discuss about handling functional neurological disorders so it's uh, nothing new but a uh, old devil in a new with a new name right so the patients who are coming or presenting with the uh, symptoms suggestive of neurological symptoms but when you examine investigate and you can't find evidence to support those so these are the cluster of symptoms we have taken together as functional neurological symptoms uh, so symptoms varies from motor weaknesses to seizures to sensory and cognitive impairments and usually affects the middle uh, and young adults which are the power of a country so disability will affect the person and family and the country as a whole so it's labeled as a medicine silent epidemic and a crisis in neurology and psychiatry's blind spot so regarding name and the treatment lot of changes occur over the past few years Uh, initially medieval period uh, people thought it was demonic possessions and then came hysteria and conversion and dissociative disorders medically unexplained so all these have a variety of presentations inside one umbrella uh, but even the specific symptom or symptomatology uh, the fits or the seizures they too have multiple names to describe like pseudo seizures non epileptic attack disorder non epileptic uh, event disorder and various other names so the i think the challenge was uh, to uh, the describe something where the patients won't get offended and the doctors also uh, agree with and they can uh, simply explain what is happening to the patients because like number needed to treat there's something called number needed to offend so certain names the patients didn't like to call themselves med you know medically unexplained or hysteria and things like that uh, so in this journey the initially we have looked at the etiology like uh, even the uh, possession states the demons or the ghosts are possessing people so the explanation is to punish them uh, for their bad actions with craft so the treatment was used using prayers uh, temple sleep it's an interesting phenomena this temple sleep where they sleep in the temple and the god will send the messages how to uh, treat uh, these conditions and they'll tell the priest and the god will guide these people how to come out of these symptoms and hysteria came much later and you all know this this displacement of the uterus the wandering uterus and the treatment was aimed at putting it back to its normal place uh, so these massages methods and uh, certain uh, instruments uh, and people say the vibrators were discovered as a result of this treatment Uh, and then came the conversion and dissociate dissociative types which is there in the ICD-10 and they say it is as a result of a internal conflict which came due to some kind of painful experience so uh, to uh, treat this they use many psychotherapies and hypnosis and supportive measures like physiotherapy speech therapy and those things and in this era this functional neurological disorders they think it's a complex uh, cognitive based uh, uh, rearrangement of the uh, neuronal pathways occur especially in the limbic cortex and the prefrontal cortex uh, limbic area and the prefrontal cortex because of these arrangements uh, the patients thinking get altered and uh, they come into conclusions and they feel emotions which are not uh, there uh, in other people so it's uh, something to go with the, the the butterfly effect and the chaos theory where a small change can later on uh, result in a massive change in the brain areas so it's a uh, mm, 
uh, interaction of multiple areas and the brain changes are there so now they think uh, it's a complex uh, thing which happens over a time but all these uh, functional neurological team things are not chronic some are acute and easily treatable because we, if we can prevent that uh, we can uh, preserve their personality and the reactions to these stressful events so what about this new name uh, is it good i think physicians like this it's easy because you can bunch all the you know, conversion, dissociation, and some of the things under somatoform umbrella, pain disorders. Everything thing can be bunched together and put inside this uh, functional neurological symptoms. And it's uh, when we uh, compare it with structural, and you can explain that this is a kind of a software problem, not a hardware problem so the physicians find it easy for the patient to tell and send the patient to us and patients also uh, not 100 percent but certain amount of patients they are happy to have a name this is functional seizure i'm having functional um, uh, uh, kind of uh, pain or something like that but uh, still people don't like you know because they don't understand what functional is and uh, for psychiatrist i think it's remained the same whatever the label they give and send to us we have to start from the beginning and see actually what is happening with this patient so that is a major task and we in this big bundle i think uh, we are seeing other things also as a part of uh, another psychiatric illness they can present with a functional symptom so our job is getting more difficult with the new nomenclature because we have to see what it is and so start from the beginning and to find appropriate treatment so comorbid conditions are also very common with functional neurological symptoms uh, some are general medical conditions uh, and some are uh, psychiatric the dual diagnosis is uh, not a uh, not not a rare thing in functional uh, neurological symptoms so it's very important for us to know the story the story of the patient this is the most important thing uh, i mean how it evolved which came first will give us a clue uh, because sometimes they are uh, when you go back retrospectively we can see the clear associations and the common presentations and uh, the common presentations which are uh, like uh, in like uh, research was done are these areas the motor disorders seizures sensory disorders and cognitive disorders and there are a few other important types uh, with functional urinary symptoms persistent postural perceptual dizziness and functional speech and voice disorders and dysphagias and global sensation i think all of you all have seen these kind of patients uh, and uh, they present to us still much uh, later stages after doing all the investigations and uh, treatment possible so uh, for the i think uh, the since there are registrars i thought of summarizing just evidence for and what what they have noticed in a uh, few of these disorders uh, because now earlier in uh, icd 10 and uh, dsm as well it was earlier considered as a diagnosis of exclusion but there are certain positive things for us to diagnose that's a that's a good thing that happened because of this diagnosis look for these things and diagnose positively uh, actually as psychiatrists uh, when we see these patients some of the symptoms may have changed but at least as psychiatrist we are doing uh, sessions for doc other doctors non psychiatric colleagues and so these will be important like the abrupt onset with fluctuating motor symptoms and the comorbid pain and fatigue usually disproportionate to the uh, complaint 
and sort of when we ask to move or do something uh, in our examination there is lot of effort and very kind of uh, frustrating expression when they follow the instructions so uh, lot of therapies uh, psychotherapies and also uh, transcranial magnet magnetic stimulation and other methods like both botulinum toxin and hypnosis many of these have tried and the evidence is only for uh, uh, cbt uh, is the best uh, the 59% improvement with cbt and sertraline but cbt alone uh, Uh, accounts for 51 percent. So sertraline alone is 27 percent. So according to the current evidence, the CBT is the uh, best treatment available. Though the other things have tried, I think most of the time the num numbers for these uh, studies, uh, the, the only the meta analysis give these uh, answers. But we know individually, all of you all are treating these patients. So this is. Uh, i appeal you to publish whatever you do e even individual case based because it's very important uh, according to my experience there are a lot of other methods other than cbt because in our culture we have to be sensitive to the culture and our patients will not come for sessions and write things and do all these things but so please publish because we are learning this for the exams all the time because this is what is available right but what is happening might be totally different from this and the when it come to functional seizures this is i think very familiar to you and this is well known uh, prolonged seizures closed eyes and uh, asynchronized movements groaning and the, but here what i i wrote this because i want to emphasize just because they are having this sometimes we have to be very careful not to miss status epilepticus not to miss just because the limb movements are not uh, synchronized uh, it may be a frontal lobe seizure and also uh, when the consciousness is there it may be a partial seizure if a neurologist screens and sends to you that's a different matter but sometimes in medical wards uh, in a quick round if the registrar says uh, this looks like functional shall we refer to the psychiatrist sometimes they don't bother to uh, do the examination again they might refer so be careful because of that uh, because if we accept them as functional uh, then sometimes we miss something uh, so the evidence again is for cbt but sertraline here says it's equal as a placebo uh, and other there's uh, level c evidence for psychoeducation uh, family group therapy uh, mindfulness based therapies and interpersonal therapies so then we move to cognitive functional cognitive disorders Uh, they usually present with memory symptoms and this is uh, an area where a lot of uh, psychiatric diagnosis may be included so it's a real difficult task from malingering to uh, some kind of ptsd kind of a thing can be included because it's just a memory thing so it's a very challenging as a psychiatrist we have to go through carefully and see what this is why this patient Okay, uh, got these symptoms. So, as I mentioned, there's need to consider PTSD, generalized anxiety, depressive, uh, factitious, and malingering as well. And there's little evidence about the studies done, and also the organic things like global uh, transient global amnesias. So here, the CBT has not proven um, improvement in these patients, but. there's little ev some evidence for stress management and group therapies and the last major one is the functional sensory disorders where patients present with pain paresthesia anesthesia or sometimes hearing uh, hearing loss or tinnitus and pain syndromes are usually well managed and lot of uh, interdisciplinary work uh, has been done the anesthesiologist psychiatrist physiotherapist and general practitioner general uh,
practitioners in other countries. They all play a good role and try to help these patients to come out their symptoms. And especially understanding of the pain pathways and the uh, slow pain path uh, carrying C fibers and uh, the pain memories which interfere with the patient's uh, further pain perceptions are uh, investigated and uh, there's I think a considerable improvement of pain symptoms at the moment and very little evidence for therapies for the other, uh, other, other things than par paresthesias and anesthesias apart from pain. So this is the available evidence and we have to, this is, these patients present to the physician, so they, ha they have the main role here. So the role of physicians, uh, if they do their job properly, it will be much easier for us to uh, help them uh, to treat these patients. So the very first thing is to, without going, excluding each and every diagnosis, to include the initial, this in the initial differential diagnosis, if they suspect, if they see these positive symptoms. And to screen them using uh, some questionnaire and see whether they have any comorbid condition. Uh, this is happening in some centers in Sri Lanka as well as in other countries. And validating symptoms as a genuine, so when, we, when we come to this, sometimes we feel in our culture, if somebody is having epilepsy, we'll say that you are having epilepsy, but we don't say uh, we understand that you are truly having a fit or something. It, it sounds odd. You are having a, you understand you are having a chest pain. It's not verbally telling, but we have to, the, the way we examine, the way we talk to the patient, where we ex explain the investigations, we have to, that, that is an understanding that I really care for you. Not that we are staying, saying the patient what at the time of it, the whole thing will destroy. So not to say, right? In English, I think that's what they mean. So as a genuine complaint. And providing a brief, understandable explanation, right? And why we, we need other other uh, other kind of help from psychiatrists, maybe psychologists, uh, uh, physiotherapists, why we need these things. So that, that is the bridge, the, that is the gap where we have to fill. Because if they do something wrong there, the patients will never come to physiotherapy or psychotherapy or any, any of these things. They will go and do something uh, uh, like traditional treatment or something. So that education is very, very important. And uh, the fostering a hopeful statement like, you know, we have seen this kind of patients and give them some hope that they will improve and liaise appropriately. So these are the important messages that we should give to the physician as uh, I think all of you get an opportunity to educate our other colleagues in the hospitals. So this is important in managing because if we catch them initially, the outcome is much better. And our role is, uh, it, as I mentioned earlier, it's not difficult to help when it comes initially because uh, the patient has not gathered more unnecessary or iatrogenic things by uh, other people, so many scans, so many interpretations, though, so, so it's very easy for us. So to understand these patients, uh, it's very important, the patient, I will put it in another slide, right? So the focus should be to improve their function, right? Not to look at what has happened, why it has happened. Try to make their function improved. While doing that, we'll make a good rapport with the patient and after that we can look into why it happens and then we can prevent that. So we have to liaise with the other teams and uh, look for possible explanations and sometimes uh, it will take a lot of time. I mean, as if a person has go to mend the roof, there's a tile uh, thinking that the problem is with one tile and later you discover the whole roof is damaged and the walls and the basement, right? So, so, so it depends on the patient, but our task is 
uh, time consuming and dif difficult when it, it, when it comes to chronic uh, functional symptoms. So multidisciplinary rehabilitation and psychotherapy is needed. So the experienced psychiatrist, they know usually they, with experience and the knowledge, they can uh, identify these things uh, very quickly within five, six minutes. But for the tra initial period, because when I was a trainee also, you know, uh, the senior psychiatrists, I mean, we thought they are doing miracles. <laughs> they are identifying this. How are they doing this? So few tips are like to, you know, change our uh, thinking. Like usually we look at what is the problem with this patient, but look at what kind of a patient is having this problem. And psychopathology also to find out risk factors and protective factors where we can help this patient. And also, uh, not a fix or a cure, but to improve the quality of the life and to share the responsibility with the patient, not to take it 100% ourselves. It's like a, uh, like a uh, very complex thing, so we have to start from somewhere and slowly we can uh, find why it occurred. So ultimate gain is to help the person to transform into a new person, accepting some of the difficulties and uh, disabilities uh, when it comes to chronic complex neurological disorders. So understanding a person, this you will learn and it will be there when you are an uh, experienced person. But initially, I think this mnemonic, bless me, like look under each of these categories, whether there are issues, whether there are problems. So if you, it's like scanning, right? Scanning. So then we will find some of some clues to find uh, why this person present to me at this particular uh, stage with this particular symptoms. So the general management is to communicate the diagnosis explanation where the patient can accept. So culture comes here, we have to give an explanation where the patient can accept and discuss the triggering factors and reflect on management, what went well, what didn't, and uh, some markers, you know, even a visual scale is okay to uh, mark the progress, because they will say, uh, Dr. Mukut Mahodane, so what about your headache? Uh, that is, eka hondai, backache, eka tamati, you know, papwe kaku meka tikak adui. So something like that, so we have to uh, have some method to mark the improvement. Sometimes at one go, when you find the thing, it will disappear. So I'll tell you two stories. One is a difficult one. A 25-year-old male who had recurrent fit, diagnosed patient with uh, epilepsy. Uh, but he had multiple factors like dominating mother, they are forcing him to do gem cutting. And uh, he is also not very good at arithmetics. And father is also overprotective. So the fits are there. So we are try, trying to make him understand the triggers and how to ground him, how to relax and sit when he gets these things. So then his fits are still there. The new fits are there. But still he is coping well. The frequency is less. The second one, the one girl who came with uh, loss of uh, uh, voice, he, she couldn't speak. This happened at the school and done a lot of things uh, for three months and antidepressants were given. So she was not depressed, she was on antidepressants, but uh, her voice didn't, uh, it, it didn't return at that time. So the problem was a teacher has harassed her, stop her going for a sports event and when that was addressed and she wrote poetry about those things and then her, when, when that problem was addressed and then she realized if, if, if this symptom persisted, the teacher is the one who benefits because she wants to harass her and put her down. And so then immediately she recovered and she did well. So this is, a, this is due to a particular incident. There's one thing. So, I just want to tell it's a spectrum. 
uh, on one hand it's chronic multifactorial on this hand on the other hand it's but due to one particular damaging event so if you address it you can do miracles so this is the spectrum and if we examine these patients take time and uh, to try to find out and uh, you can use those two uh, the things which i have given you initially but after you, when you are experienced it will be very easy so these are the points to ponder it's a heterogeneic uh, disorder uh, so ideally uh, according to the guidelines the psychiatrist should assess them and the differential diagnosis uh, at early stages will give better outcomes and uh, the chronic presentations need complex care and it is important to highlight uh, that uh, the patients should develop where we have to help the patients to develop self management plans and not to miss new symptoms because if we think that new symptoms is also part of that we might miss something so new symptoms should be given attention and see whether they are also compatible with the previous uh, ones or are they different because some people i have seen they had functional neurological symptoms but that doesn't mean that they can't get a organic illness so that is also we have to remember so these are the things i want to uh, share with you and this is uh, the old treatment method for functional uh, disorders uh, those days still we don't have the two chairs but the medicine or the neurology and we are on the other stool the psychiatrist we have to balance the patient and make the patient's life better thank you so much